Hey, cool gray. It's uh, late afternoon in the kitchen. It's a bit of a mess. We've been busy, <laughs> but I wanted to shoot this intro super quick and um, I'm also hand holding because my tripod broke and I'm waiting for the new one to arrive in the mail. But all of that's irrelevant because today I'm bringing you one of my very favorite lifelong recipes ever. It is Kasha Varnishkas. I know, that sounds real silly, and many of you are probably saying, what in the world is that? Well, I'm about to tell you. Uh, first, I'm actually going to give you a little background information for those of you who don't know what kasha is and what makes it varnishkas, and then we're going to jump right into the recipe. I've been eating this my entire life. It is the ultimate comfort food for me. Today, I'm making a double batch because I'm giving half of it to my mom who's recovering from surgery. It's comfort food for her too. So uh, let's talk about it for a minute. Kasha is a grain. It's buckwheat, actually. Buckwheat is not wheat, and it's gluten-free, so it makes it a wonderful alternative to rice for those of you who do eat gluten-free. It has a very rich, nutty flavor and lots and lots of nutrition. This is a staple dish in Eastern Europe uh, where it's used as a sweetened hot cereal for breakfast as well as a savory side dish for the dinner table. I use this brand of packaged kasha, which is available in whole, the whole grain or in various levels of ground. And I would recommend using either the whole or the coarse ground kasha for this dish. Avoid the medium or fine grain uh, unless you're making breakfast. You can also find kasha, possibly labeled buckwheat groats, sold in bulk in your favorite natural foods grocery store. Since I have some Eastern European relatives, I grew up on kasha, not only at our dinner table, but as a popular menu item in Jewish delis and as an alternative stuffing for knishes. Did you just say, what's a knish? If you don't know what a knish is, you probably are not a New Yorker or a Los Angelian. So let me tell you, knishes are Jewish street food and they consist uh, mainly of a pastry shell by default, it's filled with mashed potatoes and served with mustard. They look like this or this. They are delicious. I don't think I've had a knish since I moved to Florida 12 years ago, and now I'm hungry for one. But let's get back to the kasha recipe. My mother made this uh, dish for us, usually uh, just following the package directions, cooking the grain in water, and adding the traditional large bow tie egg noodles called farfalle. I cook mine in chicken broth or chicken stock for extra flavor. I coat my kasha with egg and toast it a little bit in the pan before adding my water. Uh, my preference for pasta is the mini egg bows, which you'll see me do in a moment. I use an entire stick of butter in mine. That's a no recipe anywhere. That's just me. Uh, and I add a jar of sliced mushrooms, which mom did not. I find that this combination makes for the most delicious version of the dish. So let's get started with the recipe. For our ingredients, we really just need a few. This is a pretty simple dish to put together. Here's my kasha. I'm using the whole grain, and these grains have been roasted already. We talked about this already. There are very simple directions on the back of the package if you're making it for the first time, but I'm gonna show you all my tips and tricks. I've got one quart of chicken stock. I've got my small egg bow ties. These can sometimes be hard to find. Uh, I've got an onion. I've got a jar of green uh, giant sliced mushrooms and I use an entire stick of butter. It's what I do and I'm telling you it makes for delicious. So while my water is boiling I'm gonna start pulling some things together. I'm making a double recipe so that's the entire box today but you can easily have this recipe uh, if you're serving it to just a couple of people. To get started I'm going to coat my grain with a couple of eggs so it's one egg per one cup of grain and I'm using the whole box that's two cups so I'm just gonna beat the eggs a little bit together and then I'm gonna make sure all of my grain is coated as evenly as possible and once I've accomplished that I'm just gonna set that aside what that'll do is help me get a very nice flavor later on when I toast them and then I'm gonna just cut up my onion which we always do in triple time around here because it's so much more fun <laughs> really that's fun right don't you wish you could do that every time you were actually chopping an onion my water's boiling and I'm going to go ahead and add my egg bows I've got three tablespoons of butter 
melting in my other skillet and to that I'm going to add my onions and there is nothing better than the smell of onions cooking in butter. I'm going to stir those around and cook them until they're just translucent. We don't want to caramelize and we don't want to cook these down too far because they're going to continue to cook as we put the dish together. A little bit of salt will help those onions to sweat and bring out a little bit of sweetness, oddly enough. So this is about what we're looking for, just translucent. And now I move my onions out to the edge of the pan. There's still gonna be a little bit of fat in the middle there, and I'm going to add my mushrooms. And then I'm going to go ahead and just stir those together and let those heat through fairly thoroughly, about a minute or so. Once that's done, I've separated everything out to the edge of the pan again, and I'm melting another tablespoon of butter in the center. I'm gonna bring my heat up to medium high. And once that butter is melted, I'm gonna introduce my kasha. Now, the egg having sat in there for a while, it's kind of stuck together a bit, as you see. So you wanna fluff that up, separate those grains as much as possible. You really don't want a lumpy, bumpy kasha. And you can see you might have to work at that a little bit, but this step is truly worth it. It is optional, and I don't think the egg portion is mentioned on the back of the box. Trust me, do this. So I'm letting those groats uh, toast a little bit on the bottom of the pan, and then to help add some heat and cook that egg and help bring out the nuttiness, I'm gonna add those hot vegetables on top of everything. Stir it all together, keep those grains separated. And this whole process is going to take about three to four minutes. You saw me moving my pot around a little bit because I've got the rest of the half stick of butter melting in the bottom of my pan. I've already finished cooking my uh, noodles, my pasta, and they've drained, and now I'm adding those to the butter. Just gonna give that a stir and then uh, set it aside to add to my kasha once it's finished. And that'll take just about the right amount of time for me to come back and check my groats. They should have a nice toast on them now. And as I start stirring those up again, you'll see that the egg has helped the grain kind of stick together a little bit. So once again, my task is to break that all up and keep those grains as individual as possible. That's gonna make for the best possible consistency for the kasha. I wish you could smell my kitchen right now. Oh my goodness, this is just home for me. This is about as soul food as it gets for Cool Gray, I'm telling you. Once I've got those steps completed, my next step is to add my chicken broth. We're gonna use an entire quart, and I'm using chicken stock. I think it's a little bit more flavorful. You can use chicken broth, you can use water if you want to. But these are my tried and true steps for what I think is the perfect kasha. I'm gonna turn my heat up to high, stir this up a little bit. Once again, always working to keep those grains separated. I want to bring this to a boil and I want that to boil for about a minute. You'll see my grains are already starting to soften here. And once I've uh, achieved a boil for about a minute, I'm going to reduce my heat to simmer. I'm gonna cover and I'm gonna let that cook on a low heat for 15 minutes. When that's done, this is what you've got. All of that water should be absorbed. If it isn't, you can cook it a little uncovered for a while to try to get the rest of it, but usually 15 minutes is just perfect. It'll be moist, but you won't see any water in the bottom of your pan. Once again, I'm fluffing and separating my grains, and now I'm gonna go ahead and add my egg bows to this pan. So if you're making the double batch, have a large, nice, deep pan. Remember that you're gonna need to leave enough room in there to do this step later. And as you can see, I'm taking great care to get every single little egg bow out of there. Every one. <laughs> There's no waste. Now I'm gonna fold those ingredients together. I'm gonna take some time to do this because I want 
these uh, the pasta and the grains to be mixed together as evenly as possible. We don't want to have either a big clump of grain with no pasta or a big clump of pasta with no grain in the bowl. So I mix and mix and mix until it really is very, very, very well integrated. When that's done, it's time to ring that dinner bell. This is good, fresh. It's great the next day. I have been known to go into the refrigerator and get a little bowl of this cold. You can add other vegetables if you like. It's just delicious no matter what you do. You can get a rotisserie chicken and cut it up and, and put it in there as well. Just endless possibilities. Thanks so much for watching this video. If you liked it, would you please let me know by liking it. While you're at it, please consider subscribing if you haven't already. We'd love to have you on board. We do art videos and we do cooking videos around here, so don't wait. Right now, go check out some more of those, and I will see you next time.